Hello, I got another episode of Real World Music Theory for you. This time I'm going to show you how to get from simple harmony and simple chords to complex harmony. And I'm going to do that using um, uh, an example song from the 70s, which is called New York State of Mind by Billy Joel. So I hope you can learn a lot about harmony and how to write your own songs or reharmonize existing songs in this video. Let's go! Let me tell you what we will cover in this video. So first we will look at the skeleton of the chord progression of New York State of Mind. Because this is actually the simple chord progression. And then we will start from there, turning it into a more complex, sophisticated and colorful chord progression. And we will start by using preceding dominant chords to make transitions between chords smoother. Then we will see how Billy Joel uses the backdoor progression. We will then smoothen out the chord progressions even further by using another preceding chord and two five progressions. Then you will hear <laughs> a, a very important warning to not overdo the reharmonization to find the right balance. And finally, we add some stuff that Billy Joel did not add. We use chromatic approaches and triton substitution. So there should be something to learn for everybody in this video. Let's get started. So let's look at the basic chords of this song first, at the skeleton, which is what you would usually start with if you write your own songs. And the skeleton is actually pretty simple. Let's skip the intro for now and start right with the verse. So the verse starts in C major. There's a lot of chords already. I'm going to simplify that and show you what, what are the, the cornerstones of this progression. So imagine it starts with C major as it does. So that's pretty, pretty simple. Then it moves to A minor, which is a simple move that you know from many pop songs. Then it moves to F major and to G dominant. So it's basically this progression. You've heard that a million times in pop music. It's one of, one of the most used progressions, I would say. Uh, if you want to learn more about this progression and how to write songs with it, um, check out my video and video course on that. But for now, it's this simple progression which we call the 1, 6, 4, 5 progression. It's very simple in C. This progression uh, is C major, A minor, F major, and then G major or G dominant. And then you repeat that. It always works. <laughs> but Billy Joel wanted to do a more sophisticated uh, progression that is more in the direction of, of jazz harmony, um, at least for a pop song. Please, please forgive me, you jazzers out there. <laughs> for a pop song, it's pretty jazzy already. Uh, okay, so it starts on C, and then... This is a pretty boring move to move from C major to A minor. It's not, it's not a powerful move, and the reason for that is, you, you can learn that in my other videos, but the reason for that is, these are both tonic functions. So C major and A minor are both tonic functions in the key. Um, so there's not much of a change, really. But what, Billy Joel, what, what you can always do, what Billy Joel does here, is you can precede a chord with its relative dominant chord, or with its dominant chord. So, for any chord you have, really, really any chord anywhere in your song, if you want to prepare the move to that chord and make it stronger, then just find the dominant chord to, the, to your target chord. So, 
In this case, we wanna we are on C on, on a C major chord, and we want to land on A minor. So to make the transition more powerful um, and more colorful to A minor, we need to find the dominant chord of A minor. And the dominant chord that that's simple. It's just a fifth up from the root. So from A we go fifth up and we land on E. So it's the E dominant chord would precede an A minor. And that's a simple move that you can do almost anywhere, as I said. And Billy Joel does it here in the first uh, few bars of the song. You, you hear how nicely that smooths out the transition and prepares you for the A minor. And the A minor sounds much stronger after that. And the reason for that, again, is by preparing the A minor chord with the E7 dominant chord, with this dominant chord, you're kind of establishing a new key. So before there was the key of C major, and now we're moving into the key of A minor. So th this feels much more like a strong tonic here. So just precede any chord with its dominant chord. Now we're there. And then from A minor the next chord would be F major. And again the, the move is not very strong if I just do it that like that. It's not a very strong move. And again, we can make that spicier, more colorful, more convincing and sophisticated by finding the dominant chord for our target chord. So find the dominant chord for an F major chord. And it's just the same thing again. From F, go up a fifth. And we're on C. So C dominant would be the dominant chord to F. And if we build the whole progression from the start, we go C, C major, then we move to the A minor with a nice dominant in there. Now do it again. C dominant. Oh, very satisfying to land on the F now. It's, it's much stronger. It's very satisfying. So a simple, simple trick <laughs> that is continued throughout this song. Uh, is just precede a chord with its dominant chord. And then, um, it basically repeats the whole pattern um, on the subdominant, on the, on the F chord. That the whole pattern that we did on C is now repeated on F. So we had then we move to the relative minor by using the dominant chord. And then we're moving to F. And now we do the same thing in F. So F. Then we move to the relative minor tonic. But we do that by preceding it with its dominant chord. And uh, the relative minor of F is D minor. And the dominant chord for E minor, that we would put in front of E minor, uh, in front of D minor, sorry, would be a fifth up from D. It's A, so A dominant. So from the F, the A dominant, to then land on the on the D minor. So that's a beautiful move, and it it, it repeats. So it's. Um, you have the movement, this movement in C major, and then you have the same movement uh, on the subdominant chord. And then there's this. Beautiful. And you have a nice smooth transition. Now you might ask, why do we land on the D minor? Because, because I said the, the whole basic progression is from F to G. 
And that's something we got to talk about. So basically, we could have moved from F. So the last last chord would be a G dominant chord. But again, um, we could to make it spicier, to make it more interesting, we could precede that dominant chord with its dominant chord. So that would be a fifth up from G. It would be D. So D dominant. But as G, the G chord we want to land on, is already a dominant chord. We don't want to precede it with another dominant chord. Um, we could, we could totally do that. But if we do that, it takes away some of the some of the tension that a real dominant chord has. So once you precede a chord with its dominant, one effect you get is that the chord you land on then sounds more like a, like a resolution, like a tonic. So you take away some of the tension that usually which is fine for the other chords we have but for a dominant chord we don't want to take away any tension a dominant chord should be tense so what can we do <laughs> well we can still precede this chord with um a kind of a dominant chord if you want a chord a fifth up but we precede it with a dorian chord so instead of a D major and, and with, a, with a seven, we would precede it with the D minor and a seven. And this is what Billy Joel does here. So to summarize that, instead of moving from F right to G, we're moving from F to D minor G. Which gives us a nice 2-5-1 progression, which leads us nicely back to, to the tonic again. So you can proceed any chord with its dominant chord, especially it's especially beautiful if you have a minor chord like the A minor or D minor here. You proceed it with a major dominant chord. Also works for um, major chords on the subdominant, subdominant like uh, the F, where you proceed it with, the, with its dominant chord. But for dominant chords, like the T in that case, proceed it with a Dorian chord or a minor 7 chord, because that doesn't take away the tension of the, of the actual dominant. And it makes for a nice 2 5 1 progression that leads nicely back to. So, with that in mind, let's look at the song again. We're starting with C, preparing the move to the A minor, then we are on the A minor, then we prepare the move to the F major, with the dominant, then we are on the F major, then we prepare the move to the D minor, and we are on D minor, and now we would usually major dominant to go back to C. And that brings me to the last nice spice that Billy Joel puts into this first part of the verse. Um, and that is, he doesn't give you the G dominant chord. Um, and that's a very sophisticated move here, because at the end of this, we land on the D minor, and then we would usually expect the G, and then the, the, the C. And what he does is, instead of a G a dominant, he plays a B flat dominant, which is interesting. Listen to it. So here's the second part. Beautiful chord, and then back to back to C. And why this works, <laughs> this, is, this is basically the backdoor progression. So we're getting back to C through the backdoor, not through the regular doc, uh, dominant chord, but through the backdoor. Um, 
Check out my video on the backdoor progression if you want to learn about this beautiful move. So he does that here and this B flat 7 actually acts as a dominant chord to C major. Sounds strange, but check out the video on, on the backdoor progression. You will hopefully understand that. So now we got the first part of the verse. Let me play it again and explain what I do. So here we got C major, just to start, preparing the A minor with the dominant chord. So we are on A minor. Then we prepare the F major with the dominant chord. We are on F major. Prepare the D minor with the dominant chord. We're on D minor, and then we move to the back door dominant <laughs> and back to C. One little thing in there um, that you can always do in your songs too is that if you precede a chord with its dominant chord, you can then go ahead even further. <laughs> and precede that dominant chord that you just inserted there, that wasn't there before, you can precede that with another chord, a fifth up from it. So kind of a dominant chord. Um, but same thing applies that I said for the, for the other dominant chord. If you precede a dominant chord with the chord a fifth up, you usually take a Dorian chord to not take away the tension from the original dominant. I hope this makes sense to you now. And so you can always, all of these dominants that you inserted here in the song now, you can proceed with a Dorian chord, with a minor 7 chord. Um, you can do that any way you want, <laughs> actually. I, I will show you what it sounds like if you, if you insert it before every dominant chord. So from C, we go to E dominant. And... Um, the chord, the, the minor 7 chord of 5th up would be B minor. So I could proceed that with a B minor, then E7, and then A minor. It sounds like this. Pretty sophisticated one. And now... Um, so... <laughs> You, you hear how sophisticated that already is. And so the, it, it's kind of like the harmony moves effortlessly below the melody. It's, it's, not, it's, not like it's, it's not jarring, it's not confusing you too much, but it's just like, like it's just marching underneath the melody. It's, it's a nice thing. The reason why that works is, um, I'm going to explain that in another video, <laughs> not to make this not too long, um, it's just the circle of fifth, the power of the circle of fifth. As long as you move harmonies from a fifth up, a fifth down, so you always move a fifth down, um, then, then it sounds very organic. And this is what we do here. If we find the dominant chord, we actually find the chord a fifth up so that we can move then from that chord a fifth down. And um, we can continue that. We, so we can move a fifth down to the dominant chord, then a fifth down to the ton tonic chord. And this is basically what a 2-5 progression is. And we could, as I said, we can do that here anywhere. Billy Joel only does it for one of the progressions. So not to overwhelm you with too many um, chords. So that is something you, you, you have to keep in mind when you write songs or when you reharmonize existing songs. You, can, you, you could basically use a different harmony on every note of the melody. And sometimes that's, that's very beautiful. But most of the time it, it kind of... It's too much for the listen. It's too much to follow. It's it's interesting for us for a certain part. If you do it in a certain certain bar or in a certain point of the song, that's beautiful. If you harmonize really every note of the melody, if you reharmonize everything and move through the circle of fifth effortlessly. But 
If you do it the whole song, then people are just going to say, oh, this is crazy. This can't, I can't listen to this. This is too complex. So try to find a balance between a little spice that you put in there, but not too much so that people won't eat it anymore. So we just leave it here with the dominant. And then do the precede the dominant with, with um, its Dorian chord. Which gives us that nice 2-5-1 progression from jazz. Then we just take the dominant again. And then that backdoor progression. You can really ah, lean into it and really enjoy it. It's so beautiful. And, and usually you hit it softly. So you... It's just you can let it linger there for a while. People will enjoy it and then you continue with the song. Yeah, and you continue. So, almost done with this first part of the video. Um, if you want to go even further with the reharmonization of a song, and Billy Joel did not do that. I don't. I don't know if he if he does it live when he plays the song. Maybe maybe in a different variation. But on the recording, um, he he sticks with these chords that we just discussed. But now that we have this beautiful thing, when we land on the A minor, we then move to the G minor seven, C seven, F. So this is uh, as I said a classical. 2-5-1 progression and we can do a lot here. So the move from the A minor to the G minor this is just one whole step down and this is something that backs for for uh, a chromatic approach. <laughs> so chromatic approach in this case means just if we move a whole step down then there is one half step in between that we could also take. Two half steps is also a whole step. So just take the A minor chord, move it down a half step, and then a whole step, a, 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 another half step. So, and this is a nice move that you can do once in a while. It's nice, and it's uh, it's easy to play um, on most instruments because you just the same chord down. I mean we we've gone from A minor 7 to G minor 7 so it's basically the same voicing you play. And if you don't move it down a whole step at once but just two half steps then you have a nice chromatic approach. And if you want to go even further with that <laughs> you can do a tritone substitution. Uh, again topic for a whole different video but uh, in this case, a tritone substitution is simply sliding down another half step. Because, look at this. We got A minor sliding down to G minor. Then, forget about the C uh, dominant uh, for a second. From the G minor, then we move, basically move down to the F major. So another whole step down. And this means we could take the half step in between again. Uh, so G flat. Um, and this is actually another way to look at a tritone substitution. So we stop substituting the C dominant chord with the chord a tritone away from it, which is G flat. And this lets us do this whole progression in, um, if we move from the A minor, Move to G G minor ah, down like that. So maybe you don't hear much of a difference, but that, that's that's the magic of a triton substitution. It's so far away from the original key, so G uh, uh, a G flat dominant chord is as far away from a C dominant chord as you could go. <laughs> but it sounds almost like the same chord. And in fact, if you, if you look at most voicings, it is the same chord. It's the same chord voicing, it's just the bass is playing a different note. So 
So now we can move this chromatic, chromatic down. Then we do the dominant on the G flat and go to the F. And this gives us a nice descending bass line. So we move from the A, A flat, G, G flat, F. And stepwise moving bass uh, lines, bass lines are always a nice thing to do. They kind of give some, some, some anchoring point and direction to a song. Now, you don't have to do that. Billy Joel doesn't have, to, does, doesn't have to, of course, but he doesn't do that. He just uses the regular dominant, which is fine too. So let's summarize this uh, first part of the verse. So the basic skeleton of this song is two bars of C major, of A minor, two bars of F major, two bars of G, minor, uh, G dominant. But this would be too boring, and so we do the whole substitution thing, and it sounds like that. Sounds very sophisticated, although it is still the underlying simple pop progression. It now sounds much more, uh, much more, yeah, sophisticated, much much more colorful. It's it's more unique, and that's what you want for your own song. I'm going to continue in another video with the second part of the verse and the, um, how the song continues. So check this out, subscribe if you like that, check out the other videos on the backdoor progression and all the other stuff if you want to learn about it. Hope to see you soon, bye!